Welcome to another chapter podcast with your hosts, Claire and Rebecca. Do you love books? Well, you've come to the right place. Join us as we discuss all things books. Hi everyone, welcome to our first ever episode of Another Chapter, the podcast. So this is chapter one. Like every good opening chapter, this episode is going to be an exposition of sorts. So we're going to introduce ourselves and hopefully by the end of this episode, you're going to know the two of us a little bit better. So my name is Claire. I'm 34 years of age. I am in Cork and I am a teacher. And I am Rebecca. I am 37 years of age. I'm also in Cork and I am also a teacher, which is how our paths actually crossed long before we became books to buddies on Instagram. We both studied in UCC together doing our HDIP, which is the teaching diploma. And when we got friendly on Instagram, we decided to meet for lunch and we made the connection that we actually had recognized each other and we knew each other in a past life. Um, and that was that we were stuck together. Though we might know each other well enough, but you might not know us at all. So I'm going to interview Rebecca. And I'm going to interview Claire. And hopefully you will feel like you know a bit more about us before we get stuck in. So Rebecca, are you good to go? Oh yeah, I am. Okay, so before I get into the book questions, can you tell everybody what your Instagram handle is and what the meaning is behind it? Okay, so on Instagram, my, well, my bookstagram is a rural reader, all one word. A lot of people think it's oral reader. I get that a lot. And it is my fault for not being clever enough to use mm -hmm. a full stop or underscore or something between the words. Um, I wish Instagram would let me change it so that I could capitalize the relevant parts. But yes, a rural reader. While I'm not from the countryside myself originally, I do live in the countryside now. I live on a farm, so the rural part of it felt quite apt. And also the fact that my initials are RA, so the AR in the start of it seemed seemed fitting. And and that's it. Very good. So what made you join Bookstagram? Like did someone influence you to do it or did you do it of your own accord? I so I have a personal account as well, my own my own Rebecca one. Um, but I set up, it was well before COVID anyway, I actually set up a Booksta account on a whim some night thinking, oh yeah, I'll go putting up reviews. I have great aspirations of like a blog and all this. Set up the account, but wasn't really active on it mm -hmm. um, until probably COVID itself, I'd say actually. Um, I started following more and more people through that account so that I could see reviews and so on. And the more accounts I followed, the more I realised that there was actually a really active bookstagram community here in Ireland. Mm. I joined the read-alongs, the, the book club reads for the Tired Mammy book club as well. I think my first one was February 2021. And ever since then, I've been super active on bookstagram. So the account has been there for a while, but I would say I'm really only active with probably two years, if even that. Oh, that's mad. I thought that you were active on it way longer from all the books that you've read but that leads me into the next one um how many books <laughs> have you read this year <laughs> I really I, I knew this question was coming and I really should have checked this answer but I'm pretty certain up to today which is a few weeks before the podcast will be out the total is 166 so 166 books <sighs> wow um yeah in one yeah year. um in one year. Well, not, e not even a year, That's technically. Mad. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're putting the rest of us to shame. There are people who read more than me, in fairness. But, like, was the last year I set myself a target of, I think it was 52 books. Because I I think the year before, I thought maybe 50. So last year, I was like, I'll up it a tiny bit. And I didn't even reach the 52. And I was quite disappointed myself. Not, not necessarily that I didn't reach the target, but that... I didn't read more in general. Mm. Um, but this year then I really got back into the swing of things. Now I will say that that 166 does include novellas, short stories, you know, anything that's a reasonable length, more than a few pages. Once it is either classified as a short story or a novella at the very least, 
then I have included that, especially when, say, for the month of November, you know, with the, the MS Readathon, mm-hmm. I think we all did a lot of kind of shorter books yeah. and short stories for that as well. That So that definitely helped, but I listened to a massive amount of audiobooks this year. Um, Earlier in the year, I had, I was a bit ill and I couldn't concentrate on reading Kindle, uh, physical books, nothing. So audiobooks were actually my saviour at that time and I got through mm-hmm. them quite quickly. And it also helps that I do read at quite a, a quick speed. Uh, at this point, if I try to listen to a book at one speed, it sounds like they're all underwater. So <laughs> I have to listen to at least 1.5, if not... If not two, yeah. Um, it's hilarious. Like when I listen to it, I'm like, are they are they talking right? Yeah, they do tend to read it quite slowly, don't they? They do. And I suppose, yeah, when you're used to people talking quickly, and I suppose us being from Cork, we speak quite quickly anyway, and we're used to hearing people mm. talking fast. Um, but yeah, like that's because I'm used to audiobooks yeah. as well. If you're not used to audiobooks and you try to jump straight in it one and a half times, it sounds like, it sounds ridiculous. So I built mm. up to that, I suppose. But yeah, that would be why I have such a high number yeah. this year. I don't ever anticipate it being that high again, to be fair. Uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, your next question was kind of about that. Like, how did you find the time to read so many books when you're working and you have three young kids? Is there anything else that you'd add as to how you managed to make the time? Yeah, so the audiobooks would be the big part of it. And the fact that I'm listening to them at all, obviously, is a big help. But also the fact that when I am pottering around the house, mm-hmm. when I'm cooking cleaning when I'm in the car you know I'm listening to them so even you know the half hour you know hour in the evening where I'm tidying up or making dinner or whatever it is I have my headphones in if I go shopping I bring my headphones with me now I you know there are days when I feel more like listening to music or a podcast or whatever but by and large I'm listening to something a lot of the time but also one thing I did a very conscious decision at some point I can't remember was it this year or late last year um the home screen of my phone I changed the icons so that I have no social media icons on the home screen anymore. What I have on my home screen is obviously my call, my camera, whatever, but I have Borrowbox, I have my Kindle app, Scribd, Audible and Libby. So now when I pick up my phone, the way we all, we all do, kind of not thinking, mm. I instinctively go to one of those now. So at the very least, if I pick it up, I might go into my ebook. Or I might have a look to see, is there anything that I could borrow? You know, it's it tends to be book related stuff I'm doing mm. now when I am on my phone, um, which definitely has made a difference as well. There's, there isn't as much mindless scrolling. There is some, but not as much. I was just going to say that's a very mindful way to approach using your phone, because I know that I like, I suppose when I was um, pregnant during COVID and stuff, I just had my phone to kind of connect me to the outside world, which was great. But it kind of can take over a little bit as well. So being mindful of what you're using it for is a great thing. So fair play to you for that. They're great suggestions. I It's it's something I, I would say, like, I don't know why it didn't occur to me before, but like that will say I had Instagram or whatever in a certain place in the phone and like your, mm. whatever, your muscle memory, you pick up your phone and your thumb or whatever would automatically go to that place. Mm-hmm. So whatever, whatever one I used to use most, I put yeah. my Kindle app in that place now. So when I pick it up, even now, I automatically kind of go to the Kindle app. And it's, gr- it's great because I always have an ebook on the go as well. If nothing else, it reminds me that. Oh, yeah. That's very smart. Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> so what advice would you give to somebody who wants to read more but feels like they don't have the time? Just kind of leading back to what I just said there, even taking one minute to read a couple of pages is and, and being mindful of doing that um, helps massively. Um, I know when I struggled to get back into reading mm-hmm. after I had my first child, he is six now since September, I it felt like my brain just couldn't focus on reading. Um, and it was much easier to pick up the phone and just scroll mindlessly for five minutes to be doing something you know, during those night feeds or whatever, um, rather than actively seeking out a book. But then over mm. time, I kind of changed my mindset that if I had like I bought a Kindle or well, I had a Kindle, but I got a newer Kindle, um, which obviously is a bit easier to kind of carry around. And when you have the Kindle app on your phone or whatever ebook app on your phone, it definitely helps that no matter where you are, mm. if you've two minutes before collecting the kids, you know, you, you generally have your phone if you don't have a book with you. So you can always pick up um, where you're reading on an ebook. Um, but definitely be more mindful of it mm. that if I know I'm going somewhere like an appointment or if I'm going to be waiting for a bit in the car 
with the kids I always try and have something to read with me so that I have the option and by and large now I will that will be my first choice when I want to do something when I'm waiting I will pick up the book as opposed to doing anything else so I think that helps give give yourself the option of making it as easy for yourself as possible that's great yeah like if you have the stuff with you you you're going to gravitate towards it if it's something that you want to improve on to you know your reading time exactly exactly so yeah. if someone has decided to listen because they want to get back into reading what book would you recommend they pick up so this is this is the hard one obviously because everyone is so interested in different things people like different books mm. um so i suppose the first thing is try and pick a topic that you are genuinely something you genuinely want to read um you know if you are following bookstagram and your personal accounts and see everyone talking about this amazing literary book mm. You, you don't have to do that. Don't feel you need to do that. If you see someone's reading a romance or some nice kind of light, easy reading book and you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Go for it. You know, don't read what you want, um, but also try and pick a book that isn't going to be very emotionally draining, that isn't dealing with very heavy topics. You want something that you look forward to picking up and that is easy to read. Um, and an author that I like myself, who I don't see much about, is Mike Gale. He's a British, a British writer, and he writes a lot of these kind of feel good stories. Now there is there can be sad elements to it. Like <clears throat> one of my favorite ones is All the Lonely People, but his books tend to be about like creating relationships. And um, I always get very invested in his characters because they're all very normal people. They're all very sweet. Um, and it's them kind of connecting with each other mm. by and large. So he's an author, I think, writes really nice books for people who want something easy to read. But that is that is interesting at the same time. Very good. I think I've read one of his books. All right. And um, it is one of my Kindle and I've definitely read it and I remember enjoying it. There's one thing about me. I, I'll forget things very easily. So I do remember that I enjoyed it. I just could not tell you what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, what was your favorite book as a child? It, it would be hard to pick one um, like when I think about my childhood and my reading it's more so Enid Blyton in general um, my mom really got me into reading my mom would be quite a big reader as well and it was the Enid Blyton, Blyton books that I would have started on and particularly the five find outers and dog series which is like the more mystery um, version of the famous five and I just adored those. Mom kind of was used to pick them up whenever she would see them and I used to read them all. And then when I started going to the library myself, it was books like, we'll say, Sweet Valley Twins and then later Sweet Valley High, Point Horror. They, I kind of got into series, mm. actually, now that I think about it, probably because of that. But I loved the whole idea of having kind of the continuity of yeah. the same characters and... Yeah, so the, the Enid Blyton stories um, would definitely have been the, the main ones. None in particular, um, but them as a whole would have been my big thing as a child. Yeah. My next question for you isn't very bookish. Could you tell us three random facts about yourself? Yes, this is a question I think everyone, like when they hear it, they go, <laughs> what? what's interesting and what's random about me? Um, so I suppose the first one is that I have a national title for public speaking, team public speaking, but public speaking. So while I am quite an introverted person in general, I'm actually, I've learned to be very good at speaking in front of other people, um, thus the being interested in doing a podcast. Um, so that's my first one. <laughs> Leading on from that, the, the title actually was when was won when I was part of MACRA. Nefarma, mm. uh, that youth organization. So again, while I'm not necessarily from a rural or you know farming background myself, I joined it not really knowing what it was. Sure, it ended up being like the best thing I ever did. Met my husband Aww. from it. He was in a different club. Um, we were the stereotypical macro couple, the teacher and the farmer. Um, loved my time in it, but it just feels like a whole other, a whole other part of my life now. So yeah, the public speaking title came from that. I actually won a quiz title, a national quiz title as right. well. Um, like a general knowledge quiz. Anyway, um, the third one is that I'm a member of Mensa, the High IQ Society. Tell so, us more. Uh, I always say I'm very book smart. I'm very book smart, but not always life smart. Um, <laughs> so I can be very clever with some things, and then I'll say something in my everyday life that even I'm going. Anna or Rebecca, what? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> or how did you not know how this? Did you, how did you do 
how did you get into it? Sorry, like tell us more. I find this fascinating because I think I've met one other person um, who's a member of Mensa. So I don't know, like, do you have to pay to get in? Like, what does it involve? It's I would never yeah, leave Mensa, by the way. It's so but... random. <laughs> you, you don't know because I... It's something I've been aware of, like the organisation in the back of my head for mm. ages. You know the way you'd see like stories in the paper about kids at five years old who joined it, that kind yes. of crap. Um, and it was always something I was kind of interested in, in the sense of, I wonder how I'd get on if I sat a test for it. And um, I became friendly with a woman after I had my first child. We had kids around the same time. And she randomly mentioned once that she was a member. She'd sat the test for a laugh, had passed it, and was a member so I was like oh my god that's that's so interesting so of course I went online and I was seeing what what was actually involved and they mm. sit different tests now this was pre-covid but they sit different tests around the country and I went and sat the test one random Saturday in UCC and um you sit two parts there it's kind of logic puzzles that kind of thing um mm. you sit two that's tests how I know I'd never make become it a member <laughs> Um, yeah, you sit the two tests and to, to be allowed to be a member, then you have to come in the top 2% of your country for, in either test. So we'll say in theory, if I sat the same test in Germany, I may or may not make a member of German Mensa. Do you know what I mean? Because it's based yes. off of what your general population would get. Okay. Uh, but I got in the top 2% in both tests. So wow. I joined, you pay an annual fee. I literally joined to say I'm a member and I don't actually <laughs> do a whole pile at all with it. But I love being able to say I am. But yeah. So there you yeah, go. That's good. a very random fact. Yeah, that's a good one. I have nothing to top that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last question for you is book related. You'll be happy to know. And it's, it tends to be one that's a little bit controversial on a book scram anyway, but uh, do you power through a book or do you DNF, which is do not finish for anyone that doesn't know the time? Um, up to this year, I would have said power through, but there were so not so many books, to be fair now. Uh, there were books that you get to the end of them and I'm like, why? Why did I bother? Mm. I didn't enjoy that. I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. However, much of the way through, I should have just stopped. Um and i suppose this year especially i've very much gotten you know, the attitude that look dnf if you're not happy finish it mm -hmm. uh, or do not finish it more to the point um <laughs> now there are some that i would not finish at the time but intend to come back to whereas there are others there have been maybe three or four this year that i have just been a certain percentage in and i just haven't felt it or maybe something has come yeah. up in it and i'm like oh i don't like that now at all and yeah um, i'm not happy with continuing that and i i stop and i'm at peace with that i have so many books um too little time life's too short yeah. i suppose is my attitude at this point but i don't blame i also don't blame people for powering through because i i would have for a very very long time as well mm. and when you put so much mental energy into a book up to a certain point sometimes it can feel like a waste if you don't see it through because at least then you can have a full opinion on the whole thing as opposed to 30% of it or 70% of it or whatever yeah that's very true so there you so, go yeah. your questions are done well yeah. done your first interview. there you go <laughs> and now now your turn um so I hope you're ready for these terribly no, complicated questions <laughs> So following your lead, uh, before I get into the book questions, tell us what your Insta handle is and what the meaning is behind it. Okay, so my Instagram handle is getting back to books and there are full stops in between all of my words. Um, and basically I was, I had my son just um, in the middle of COVID and I kind of wasn't seeing anybody and it was quite isolating I suppose and I kind of wanted to get back into doing something for myself and what I decided to do was to try and get back into reading so like I studied English in UCC and that kind of cut me off of reading because we were kind of made to read a lot of classic literature which absolutely killed me and did not enjoy it so there have been periods of time in my life where I've kind of gotten 
out of reading and I just kind of wanted to get back into it because I think I realized that it was a huge part of my identity um which was kind of alarming I wasn't expecting to be that connected to I suppose a hobby um but yeah so that's what I did I set up a bookscram page and when I was deliberating over the name I was like what's the purpose what do I want to do here and it was just getting back into books so that's where the Instagram handle came from <laughs> excellent and you raise a really good point there about the fact that reading is so much more than just a hobby that if you're a reader it tends it's much more of your life than just something you do you know um and that is something that maybe we could actually discuss in a future episode um absolutely so yeah great noting it down <laughs> um so kind of following on from that what made you join bookstagram or who influenced you to join bookstagram so yeah so after having my son i decided to get back on Instagram I suppose I had deleted my personal account a few years back um so I made another personal account and then I kind of really loved seeing the book stuff so um Sinead Cuddihy who owns the account and runs at Tired Mommy Book Club um she popped up and I started following her and I loved the idea of giving yourself 30 minutes of the day like there's 24 hours in a day just take 30 minutes for yourself and read you know and um, so she definitely played a big part and then you as well were a big influence because I suppose we started messaging um, and when I kind of said to you that I was considering it you were like definitely go for it it's a lovely community um, like I'd have savage imposter syndrome like just terrified that oh why am I setting up a book page but um, yeah you really encouraged me to do it and I'm really glad that I followed through because you weren't wrong it's a lovely community so yeah that's how I'm there. Excellent. It's lovely to hear that normal people like me and Sinead are mm. encouraging people to read in that way and to get involved in that way. And actually, even in the last number of weeks, we both have noticed kind of even there are some people who have gotten rid or aren't going to be using their personal accounts as mm. much and have set up bookstagram accounts, especially for it. It is definitely one of the better yeah. corners of the Internet these days. Yeah. So leading on kind of from that, have you found that your reading or your reading habits have changed since you joined Bookstagram? Absolutely. So I found that um I'd kind of gotten out of reading, as I said, when I was pregnant. I don't know if everybody has the same experience, but my emotions were insanely heightened. So anything that I was reading, I felt it was it was hitting me a lot harder than what it normally would. So I kind of stepped back from reading things. Um, but after joining Bookstagram, I'm after getting back into things. Um, like I'm reading way more. I read in a variety of different ways now, I suppose. And yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying it. It doesn't feel like a chore. I love the buddy reads. So a buddy read on Instagram for anyone that isn't or hasn't taken part in one, you make a little group and you all read the same book and generally you're given the same, you read the same amount of pages or chapters on any given day. And you get to talk about it afterwards, which I absolutely adore because I think you could fall into the rut of just reading and reviewing. But I love having the chats about the books. So that really has helped me get back into it. Like that's the passion, I think, coming through when you're able to sit down and have a conversation about what you're reading and someone else being just as excited <laughs> about what's after happening. Um, so, yeah, I think I definitely have noticed a lot of changes and I've never really been a part of a real life book club. Maybe once or twice I've tried to start them and they've all kind of fallen to the wayside a bit. But I love the interaction and, you know, the sense of community that is there when you're reading through a bookstagram account. Does that answer the question? I feel like I've gone off on a bit of a tangent. Sorry. <laughs> it does. It does. How your habits have changed, how your reading has changed. The discussion element of it is would be a big part. And when you when you actually approached me, um, oh God, months and months ago now about potentially starting this podcast, yeah. that was kind of one of your things that mm. uh, I suppose what a lot of us tend to do on Bookstagram is just put up book reviews and that we might join a body read or maybe message people on their story if they've put up a book yeah. that you enjoyed or didn't or are interested in. So this this podcast is a nice way to add to that, add to the discussion element of it. Yeah. So let's get to the numbers. Um, Have you a target number of books to read this year? If yes, how many? 
and if no why not and how many books have you read okay um i suppose i started this year off i think i joined bookstagram in february of this year so i didn't intentionally set any reading goal at the start of the year but i think when i set up the account i was like Do you know what i think i'm gonna go for 22 because it's 2022 and i was just thinking that it might be a nice way to try and ease myself back into it now i've definitely doubled that at the moment i think i'm on like 46 or something and I'm delighted with that because it's hard to find the time to read when you've got a smallie wreck in the gaff. I suppose yeah. it's a uh, it's hard, but yeah, it's, um, I, I'm happy with what I've done. I I used to be reading upwards of like seventy, eighty in a year, and um, beforehand. But I'm I'm enjoying what I'm reading. I you know I think it's important to to relish it. It's not a race. You know, it's a marathon. Yeah. You do what works for you. Yes, and that's why I was asking, like, if you didn't have a target, why not? Because some people, I think, don't like setting targets or find targets a, a, mm. a pressure. Um, for me, I I would be quite logical, and I yeah. like I like keeping track of it, even just for my own interest, more so than mm -hmm. necessarily hitting a number. Even though you know, I said I was disappointed with my own one last year, mm -hmm. but that was more just that I hadn't read more. I think even if you read one book this year, if you didn't read it all last year, like that's huge you know that's your reading that's the big thing yeah so kind of leading on from that what was the best advice you got or what worked to get you reading more when you found it a struggle you've kind of touched on this but a little bit more yeah so one of um Sinead's hashtags with her account was tired mommy 30 minutes and that was a big thing for me because I felt like I needed to start off small getting back into to reading so I just used to try and carve out the time for half an hour. Now my my small man wasn't the best napper, so you might get five, ten minutes at a, at most um when he was really small and that was very frustrating at times. But so I was trying to just give myself a half an hour out of the day where I was just reading and doing something for me that wasn't washing bottles, changing nappies, you know, all those kind of things. And as well, um Audiobooks were a big thing too. Do you know if I was going out for a walk, I just put in the headphones and instead of you know, listening to music or whatever, I started listening to more audiobooks and that made a big difference. Um because I think you can get really invested in an audiobooks. The the art of storytelling is is important too, and I think that, that really can can help if you're finding it difficult to, to sit down and read. Excellent. And actually my one of my next questions is um, any tips for people who are getting into listening to audiobooks or who have never picked up an audiobook and think it's not for them? You know, what advice would you give for them starting their first audiobook or getting them into audiobooks? Oh, I think um, that's a really good question. I think you have to, like you said with your questions there earlier, like find something that you're interested in. And I think it's important to find a narrator that you enjoy because not every narrator is the same. I remember years ago, um, I was doing a postgrad in, I, I'm an ASD teacher and I was doing a postgrad in that and I had to travel around the country quite a lot to different in-service days. And I was getting so fed up of sitting in the car and listening to the same songs on and on. And my partner downloaded um, an audiobook of 1984 for me. So it was my first experience ever with audiobooks. I don't think it was the best narration because I was afraid I was going to fall asleep at the wheel. Like it was so oh. monotonous and <laughs> drony. It was a little bit dangerous. Uh, so that was my first experience with audiobooks. And I was kind of going, I don't know if they're for me, but having, you know, I've joined Audible, I use Barrowbox, I use Scribd. And I think that like, if you find someone that narrates well, um, it makes a huge difference. So a good narrator, Stephen Forty is up there for yeah, me. Yeah. His voice, you could just listen to it all day. Um, and you you um gifted me a, an audiobook at one stage, um, Daisy Jones and the Six. And that was a very good one because it was more like a documentary. So if anyone is interested in podcasts or whatever and might be interested in reading more that might be a nice one to get into because it does sound like a little bit of a podcast or an yeah. audio documentary and um, so you don't feel like it's fiction yeah but that's it is fiction. a great and book and actually uh, yeah. i would say non-fiction titles are quite good as well to start out you mm -hmm. know like an autobiography of someone you know or like um i suppose fiction yeah. you'd be worried that you might miss an element of the story 
you know, if you had to talk to someone or if you tuned out. Whereas at least with nonfiction, it's not exactly the end of the world if you miss, you know, a minute or two of it, if you kind of zone out or whatever. So um, lots of great tips there. What was your favourite book as a child? So Enid Byton was up there, definitely, uh, as well. Yeah, she was just amazing. I used to love reading her books. I think The Magic Faraway Tree is one that stands out to me in The Enchanted Forest or The Enchanted Wood. I can't remember which one, but they were all pretty cool. Um, but one that really stands out for me, and it's one that I'm kind of, it's a series that I'm rereading at the moment um, with a gang of people on Bookstagram, is Anne of Green Gables. It's just such a gorgeous, innocent, you know, beautiful book and it's told so exquisitely and the language is just so endearing and the characters, you can't help but fall in love with them all. It's just such a lovely story. So there's a series of books and what used to happen was my grandmother, my, my dad's mom, um, had the series and she used to loan the books to the granddaughters were all big readers so one by one we'd take our turns and read Anne of Green Gables and then the next one and the next one and we kind of discuss the books uh, together which was really sweet it was kind of like a, a little book club I suppose um, but then when my my mom's mother passed away I actually was given her copy of Anne of Green Gables which uh -huh. is so sentimental to me like there's there's pages that are bookmarked and um, dog-eared I suppose that I can't bring myself to undo. I just think that it's one book that connects me to both grandmothers in such a special way because they were both big readers and really encouraged my love of reading as well. But yeah, that, that would definitely be a book that was up there as one of my favourites. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh. I know, it's a sweet one. You know, I think I think we both and a lot of people who are big into reading would love that our kids, or our kids' kids, if we can even imagine that far down the line, would have memories of us yes, like that as well, you know, that we we would have that impact on them. Um, oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> really sets the day up nicely on having yeah. lovely memories like that. Um, so actually, again, leading on quite nicely um, from what we just said was you, so you have a smallie. How have mm -hmm. books impacted your life with, you are smally. So have any in particular helped you find your feet as a new mom or have made a great addition to your life at this time? Oh, um, you've got good questions. <laughs> I suppose when I, you know, when I was thinking about having kids or whatever, I think I really wanted to promote the idea of reading. So he has bookshelves. He has two bookshelves filled with books. And to be fair, my friends for Christmases and birthdays and stuff, birthdays he's only had the one <laughs> but like they they gift books which I really love yeah. um like books that he will read when he's older as well not just books for now which I think is really sweet so everybody seems to know that that's a big value for me um yeah. and he really really loves books like he's only 18 months and he will pull books off his bookshelf and he'll come over and he'll sit down and want you to read to him and you know he, he enjoys them so that's you know that's a big win for me um with regards to finding my feet as a mom I think when you're expecting for the first time you kind of read everything that's out there and it can be quite overwhelming uh parenting wise you know there's so many different styles of parenting and you know this is what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing that it's a bit it could be a bit of an information overload but I found a book I came across it um through a podcast a thousand hours outside which i think is really really cool and um, and they recommended this book which is there's no such thing as bad weather i don't know can you see that clearly there now but it's by linda mcgurk and she is swedish and it's all about just getting your kids outside no matter what the weather is whether it's snowing lashing rain whether the sun is beating down on top of you like it lists out so many different benefits you can see like i'm not a big annotator of books but i've got this one marked um left right and center and highlighted and everything i think there seems to be this idea here anyway in ireland that oh it's lashing rain you shouldn't go out you know the child will get sick oh the child's got a bit of a cold or a cough or whatever maybe stay inside which you know there's merit to a lot of it but i do think fresh air is something that works wonders and particularly when we're living in an age where screens are everywhere and you know all the entertainment you could want for a child is on the television 
yeah. I really would love to promote a bit more of an outdoorsy lifestyle um, and just, you know, take a step back from the information and technology overload, hopefully, going forward. So, yeah, that's a book that I would recommend. And it's actually one that I would recommend to anybody, like, whether you have smallies or not. It's, um, it's really, really informative. And I learned a lot from it. And I feel a lot more confident in taking him outside, I suppose. Um, so you'd be a bit nervous at the start when you don't yeah. know what you're doing. You don't know whether you're doing things right or wrong. But I just felt very reassured that I was doing right by him. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very, it sounds like a very supportive book, which is good because you don't want to be, yeah. like you were saying, you don't want to be reading anything as a new mom or even just... If you're not a mom, if you're taking, you know, trying to do something different, you don't want a book that makes you feel bad or judgy. Um, so you've kind of led into our next bit. Um, so at the end of every episode, our intention is that we would give a recommendation. Um, it may be, well, it will be connected to the topic of the day that we're talking about in that podcast. It might be recommendations from someone we are interviewing because there will be people being interviewed it won't just be the two of us all the time um it will always be something connected to what we've spoken about so kind of to finish off today we were thinking you know what seeing as today was about you getting to know us that our recommendation would be a book that we think every you know if we could gift everyone a book this would be it so would you go with that book claire or would you pick a different one yeah, I really, really love this book. And I feel like I wish that I had read it, God, a very, very long time ago. I think that that is definitely a book that I really enjoyed. And it's nonfiction. Um, it's it's just a really lovely book. And I know that Linda McGurk has just released another book. Um, Is it called Open Air Life or Open Air Living? I need to look into it. And that is one that I really, really want to get my hands on. So this one, yeah, I think I'd definitely go with this one. For today, anyway. I know that I have loads of other books to recommend to people. But yeah, that's a lovely one. As we were talking about rain, it is raining outside. Um, but is there yeah. one particular activity <laughs> or one particular thing that you did with your son from that book that you were like, it went brilliantly, we loved it, he loved it. You know, that will say, before, if people don't get to pick up the book for a while, is there one particular thing from it that you could say, try this? Do you know what? And it's only it's only something that I've done once. Like so, we live in a pretty urban area, and everything's very well lit up. And one thing that I tried with him, and that he really, really loved, which I thought was very, it was very sweet, was going out in the dark and using a torch or a flashlight, and going on like a, a nighttime walk and seeing what you can see at nighttime. So we went, we visited friends of ours um, in Cove and we went to the woods by their house and we brought a torch and he was well kitted up, like, you know, very warm, he had his rain gear on as well, and everything. And we gave him the torch and he just absolutely loved it. Like it's a totally different atmosphere. But he just absolutely enjoyed like finding things with the torch and even figuring out what a torch does because it was quite something quite like a rave at one stage yeah. like because the beams <laughs> were going everywhere but and um, yeah it just made it a little bit more entertaining at times um, with, <laughs> yeah with him he just yeah I think that was one definitely and napping outside as well which I, I wouldn't have been too aware of I suppose but like apparently babies will sleep better and longer outdoors so in the buggy outside well wrapped up again obviously yeah even if it's cold and oh. um, yeah, there's a lot of like data in here that suggests that the colder, the better, even when you're outside for a baby to nap, which kind of would put the heart skew ways in me. Yeah, I know it's not really? it's not what we do here, I suppose. But um, it, I just find it very interesting that I suppose it's the typical Irish mammy like, oh, God, mind my child, you know, keep him well wrapped up and nice and warm. But it's, um, it has lots of health benefits, apparently. So, yeah, that's another one. Sorry, that's two now instead of one. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, my <laughs> one would be this one. So it's probably backwards there. Um, Foster mm. by Claire Keegan. Okay. So Claire Keegan has been quite popular or has, I suppose, come to more prominence this year because yeah. she was up for a major award for her new book, um, Small Things Like These, which was about... Um, all her books are kind of set in Wexford and it was about a man who comes into contact with one of the local 
kind of mothering baby homes and mm -hmm. he's he kind of wrestles with his conscience about what he suspects or knows is happening in there and the fact that no one is kind of talking about it and he has daughters yeah. himself and it's that whole her books tend to be there's an awful lot going on between the lines you know yes. that, you know one thing is said or it might be a very short sentence and then you realize there's so much going on behind it and foster is the same so foster then is about um a young girl again in wexford who after her mother has a new baby um she has a few younger siblings and the mother has a new baby and this girl who remains nameless throughout the story mm -hmm. is sent to live with her aunt and the aunt's husband um they have no child of their own there and she basically spends like a summer with them um as like a foster child as such mm -hmm. and um the the difference between her life with her own family and her life with these two people who are essentially strangers to her even though the the aunt is obviously related um to see the development of their relationship but because it's told through the eyes of this young girl um it gives this whole extra dimension but it's not it's not childish by any means but again mm -hmm. it's very much as an adult reading it you are seeing and she's describing things or you're seeing situations happen that she doesn't quite understand the importance of or what's going on whereas as an adult you're reading it and you understand and it's heartbreaking and beautiful and like it's only it's it's a novella so it is i'm just checking there it is 88 pages long um oh. if there's one book i could give to everyone that would be it i think it was originally a a short story in the new yorker okay and then she developed it it's like it's essentially the same uh, the short story version but she obviously added a bit more to it then and released it as a novella um it was on the leaving sort course leaving cert course mm. with a number of years that's actually where i came across it so i've taught it a good few times and every time i read that book i cry which says a lot when you know exactly oh, wow. what's going to happen and each time it 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 impacts you that way so yeah foster by claire keegan would be i haven't read it actually but Claire Keegan oh. is definitely someone that's come up like even so uh, small things like these was the first book that I read this year. She has really mastered the craft of packing a punch in a little amount of time. And as you said, it's like it's, exactly what's it. not being yeah. said is what carries the weight, I think, in her books from what I've experienced. And Jen, um, one of our friends on Bookstagram, Jen, who runs Late Night Literary Club, posted me down another one of Claire Keegan's books um is it Forrester's Daughter or something I, I actually haven't yeah. got around to it yet yeah. but I want to finish to finish it and read it before the end of November for the MS readathon but yeah that's sitting next to the bed now and I know it's only going to take me an hour to max to read it but like you actually nearly have to mentally prepare yourself for Claire Keegan's book sometimes because that's it there's a lot that's going it. on for such a little book yeah yeah and the, the way they're designed is is genius in the sense, yeah, they're so powerful. But every time you read them, you pick up on something else. And like you could easily read it twice mm. in one sitting. And each time you're going, oh, my God, I yeah. never I never noticed this part or I never realized the nuance beside, you know, for this conversation. It's just and like when a book, when that when a book does that to you, it just shows there's like her skill as a writer. It's unbelievable unbelievable phenomenal yeah yeah so so yes they are two very different books but two excellently you know two books that sound excellent so yeah. do you want to tell people about our read-along book for december oh yes so every month and um, we are going to have a book for everybody to read along with us if you so wish um, and at the end of the month, towards the end of the month, we'll be putting up polls and question boxes on our Instagram page, which is another chapter podcast. There's full stops between the words there too. Um, and what we'll do is we'll put up the questions, we'll put up the polls so that you can engage with us. And if anybody wants to send us any voice notes that you'd like for us to share, um, we're more than happy to do that. So for December, we've gone with Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult. I think I've been saying her name wrong forever. It's Pico. I've learned. Pico. I've, I learned. It's Pico, apparently. Oh. Pico. I, I've been pronouncing it wrong forever. Yeah, okay. Pico. There you go. Yeah. You learned something new. So, yeah, that's the book that we will be reading. And we will be posting our questions and polls um, towards the end of the month before we record our episode. And hopefully our episode 
for the Rejong book will be posted on the last week of December. Is that the goal? Yeah. That's that's the plan, I think. So and that every kind of month after that, then so we'll say from January on, the plan is that we would have two kind of main episodes every month, and that our book read along episode then would be kind of a bonus episode at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. We hope it'll be as interactive as possible. So we'll be looking for people to send in comments, like Claire was saying, to the question box, uh, voice notes. Hopefully, if we can figure out the best way to work that. We we want to make it as much of a discussion as yeah. possible. And if her book, like I was saying on our stories, if this book is anything like previous ones, there should be plenty to discuss in it as well. And what is lovely is that mm-hmm. I have a few friends, like I shared about that we were doing this on my personal page, and at least two people I know who have both said they wouldn't read mm-hmm. a massive amount, have both like basically said they're picking it up and they're going to read along oh, with us for God, it, which so if, if we do nothing else for for the year, Claire, I feel like our work <laughs> is done. Now. That's great. So, yeah. Yeah. And one of them is listening to it. She started listening to it already and she said she's really enjoying it. Excellent. I think Shinny. Yeah. Shinny. Are we done? Episode one. In the bank. Excellent. First first chapter done and dusted. <laughs> I know. Go a lot us. goes into working out how these things happen. <laughs> so yeah. It's great to have it done. Yes, yeah, so hopefully yeah, hopefully everyone has enjoyed this chat. Um, you know, from now on, there won't be as much just about us. It yes. will be about books specifically, or topics from books, or speaking to people who are connected to yeah. books. We've loads of lovely interviews coming up. Yeah, and we would love suggestions as well if, if there's anything you feel that you would like discussed or someone that you think might be worth yeah. us chatting to, by all means, let us know. We we would love suggestions as well. That's it. Okay, guys, until next time. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of Another Chapter Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share to keep the book conversation going. Thank you to Helen Becerra for the graphics, Mark Neville for the mixing and to each of our contributors. Music is Make It Work by All Good Folks. Don't forget to follow along on Instagram at Another Chapter Podcast. We'll see you there.